Okay, so here we go. Solving system of equations using substitution. Uh, this is added to your elimination and graphing method, which we've done. All right, this is basically a third part of, or third method. Basically, what, what we're using here is, we're using, again, information from two equations, but we're using the fact that we know and can determine what y is. And if we know y is 2x plus 3, then we can look in this other equation here and plug in that value. Let me show you what I mean about that. So 4x minus 4, what is y? Well, y is 2x plus 3 equal to negative 32. And a couple things have happened here. One, I've put this in here because I know what's that, that's what y is equal to. I've replaced that. But I've also, like elimination, um, I've got it to where I'm only working with one variable. Now let's rewrite this. 4x minus 8x minus 12 is equal to negative 32. Negative 4x minus 12 is equal to negative 32. I'm just solving for x here. Negative 4x is equal to... Now, I have different signs. I find the difference, difference between 32 and 12 is, is 20. Take the sign of the bigger number, negative 20 divided by negative 4. My x is 5, negative, negative, positive 5. Now, what this did, does is it, it gives me my value for x. Okay, if I know my value for x, I could simply just, just take what I had as my equation for y and solve for that and say, okay, now 2 times... I'll put in red the substitution, my value for x, which was 5. Adding the 3, I get y is equal to 10 plus 3, and then y is equal to 13. And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll put, they'll put these results, these answers, in a coordinate because that's what that is, and a coordinate graph is basically a set of all solutions, so here our solution to these two equations is 5 and 13. And if you were to graph these lines or use elimination, you would get the same result. Uh, this is nice because they have it where y is equal to something. You may run into a substitution problem where you don't have x equals something, or your x by itself, or your y by itself. And what you need to do is you actually need to solve for one of these variables in order to do substitution. So what I'll do is I'll take the x plus y equal to 5 and I'll solve, I'll solve for one of these variables. Uh, let me just solve for x here by subtracting y from both sides, inverse, using an inverse. I get x is equal to negative y plus 5. That's a key step. Key step. Now I have, now I have that, that x value. So now, now if I move this around, if this is the equation I use to move around, I can't plug back into this equation. I have to plug in to the other equation that's been given to me. All right? I have to use the information from this and plug into the other one. And that would give me 2, what is x? Negative y plus 5 plus 3y is equal to 12. And then I'm going to make sure I distribute here and get negative 2y plus 10 plus 3y is equal to 12. Combine like terms. Negative 2y, that's a y plus 10 is equal to 12. Subtract 10. My y is equal to 2. Now simply, I have my y value. I could... I could go back to this original equation and plug in here. But if I already have x by itself, why not plug into that? Why not say, I already have x by itself, why not say y negative, what's my y? Be careful with the sign here. It's 2 plus the 5, which would give me x is equal to negative 2 plus 5 or 3 x is equal to 3. And again, if I'm making coordinates out of that, I'm making a 3 and 2, x and y. Now, sometimes you're given um, an equation with a fraction in it. And this can get a little interesting. But same thing, we're trying to get x by itself. 
I, I like this. I'm going to solve for x because x here, I'll use this because x is the only, only variable without a coefficient. So, so technically, it's, e it's the easiest to solve for because all I need to do, it's the only way I could solve for a letter in one step. x is equal to negative 4y plus 20. Now again, I have to use my other equation. I'm going to plug that into here and do 1 half. What's x? x is negative 4y plus 20 plus 2y is equal to 12. Now this is nice because they have me working with a half and they have even numbers here. So distributing this gives me a negative 2y plus 10 plus 2y is equal to 12. Now, one thing you notice here is that when we've plugged in, when we've plugged in and we're solving the 1 half to the 4y, notice what happens to the variables. They cancel out. So when substituting in, you've had it. Now, plus 10 is equal to 12. It's not. It is not equal. So this is a, an instance where you have something with no solution. So if it ever comes up that you substitute and when solving for the other variable, you end up where something is not equal, something's not equal, and then, oh, and, and then the variables cancel out, well, this will end up being no solution. Let's just say by chance this was, this was a 10 instead. Let's say you had negative 2y plus 10 plus 2y is equal to 10. Right? This is different. Let's just set this equal to 10 here. And these cancel out, and you end up with 10 is equal to 10. When the, your variables cancel out, and you have a true statement, 10 is equal to 10, this is something that you would say would be infinite solutions. Here, if it's not equal, no solution.